Reverend John, you're taking the course with the exercise. You're doing the exercises. Then there's a sign in. Okay. Now I can explain the reason for the sign in. <laughs> so that when I ask people to <laughs> do the exercises, <laughs> we go through <laughs> from one, two, three, and that sequence. <laughs> so it isn't just the same few people who are always volunteering, but everybody will have to do the exercises because <laughs> I'm going to call on you. <laughs> okay. We're continuing now. This is lesson two. I was doing the reading passages from the beginning of the lesson on page 15. I think I came as far as number three. Okay. And then for the actual recitation of the passages, there is the disc, so you can practice alongside, the, along with the disc. So we don't have to do that in class. It takes a lot of time. It's more fruitful if I use the time to explain the grammar and the words. Okay, so th- here we come to passage three. Okay. Now I'm going to explain these passages, and we come to the further readings, and you have to explain them to me. Eva <laughs> meva ko bikave. Okay, eva meva just means similarly or in the same way. It's evang means thus. Eva means, it just gives a little emphasis to it. Verily thus, something like that. And ko, ko again, just gives some emphasis. It doesn't have a translatable meaning. So eva, and then bikave is the vocative for bhikkhus, for monks. So in the same way, O monks, Appaka te sata ye manusesu pacha jayanti. Appaka means few. And what case is this? Appaka? Case and number? Excuse me? Are you calling on people? No, I'm going to, when it comes to calling on people by number, that will be to do whole sentences. Right, it's a nominative plural. And it goes together with te is what? They. Well, here it goes with sata. It qualifies sata. So it's those. So few are those beings. Then we come here to ye manusesu pacha jayanti. Now, as I explained last, not last week, but two weeks ago, ye and te are correlated or connected. Ye is the relative form of the pronoun. Te, the demonstrative. So ye means who, te is those. And so the sense here is few are those beings who are reborn, pachajayanti, manusesu, amongst human beings. Manusesu is what number and case? Locative what number? Plural, right. It's the plural locative. So this means amongst human beings. And pachajayanti means reborn. And I explained last time, many, many words in Pali have, they're derived from a root, and then there's a basic stem form. Then the stem gets modified in meaning by adding prefixes to it. So here the stem form is jayanti, or Okay, let's say, put it singular, jayati, which means to be born. Can you see? If I'm this, everybody can see. I think the root is jan, which means to produce, but jayati is a passive form, to be produced or to be born. And then it gets augmented or spread by these prefixes, pati plus a. And what happens in Pali phonetics, this is a rather technical point, don't worry about it, but I'll just explain. When the i and the a meet first, the y turns into an a. 
the I turns into a Y, so it becomes Patya Jayati. But in Pali, you don't have T and Y sound together. In Sanskrit, you would have this. But in Pali, because it's a spoken language, um, the sounds undergo certain modifications. So the, just like in your Chinese, when you have <laughs> two third tones in immediate succession, the first third tone gets changed into a rising tone, or if you have a third tone preceded by <laughs> third, <laughs> okay, if you have two third tones, the first rising and falling tone gets turned into a rising tone. Okay, so here, what happens when you get CY, they get turned into two Cs. That's why, okay, here we have, so you get Pacha Jayati. You know Patita, the word Paticha Samupada. In Sanskrit, you have Pratitya Samupada. But in Pali, the RA gets turned simply into, and then the TY becomes two Cs, Paticha, so it becomes Paticha Samupada. And so the sense here is being, being reborn. Okay, so the phrase altogether means, in the same way, the Buddha has previously, he's given a simile, and now he's completing the simile by saying, in the same way, few are those beings who are reborn amongst human beings. Attako eteva sata bahutara ye anyatra manusehi pacha jayanti. Attako here has the sense of, but rather, or even here maybe compared to, but, or, okay, let's say just but rather, attako. Eteva sata bahutara. These beings, bahutara, this is from bahu, which means many, plus the ending tara is the comparative. So many becomes more. Bahutara is more, or greater in number. Ye and ete and ye, those are correlated. Ete is demonstrative, these beings. And then ye, who, as a sense of who. And anyatra means elsewhere, manusehi, elsewhere than human beings. So putting it all together, in the same way, O monks, few are those beings who are reborn amongst human beings, but rather these beings are more numerous, who, yea, are reborn elsewhere, anyatra, than amongst human beings, or who are born apart from human beings. Okay, the next one. Okay, in the same way. Okay, in the same way, O monks, those beings are few, apakate sata, ye maji mesu janapadesu pacha jayanti. Maji mesu janapadesu, gender and not yeah. Case and number, what is it? Locative. Right, it's the locative plural. And it means in the middle countries, the middle districts. In other words, speaking, <laughs> everybody thinks that their country is the middle country. Jongguo <laughs> <laughs> means that Jongguo is China, right? The middle country. That's what they think. But for the Indians, or at least the northern Indians, Magadha, the region of Magadha, northeastern India, that's the middle country. So the beings who are reborn in the middle country, the, dis- the middle districts, those are few in number. Attako eteva sata bahutara ye pajanti mesu janapadesu pachajayanti. But rather these beings are more numerous who are reborn in what are called the outlying districts, 
the border districts, in other words, the bar- bar- <laughs> you could say the barbarian land. And here the word pachantima Yeah, outlying districts would be a good rendering. But the, con- the sense is sort of that those in the outlying countries, the outlying districts, are barbarians, <laughs> uncivilized, like those born in the United States <laughs> or in Europe, Canada. Okay, any questions about this, these sentences? Could you repeat again? Okay. Okay. But rather many, but rather these beings are more numerous who are born, who are reborn apart from human beings. That's who are reborn? Let, let's put it freely. Who are reborn elsewhere than amongst human beings? Elsewhere than. Yeah. Human and in the second sentence, but rather these beings are more numerous who are reborn in the outlying districts. Okay. The next sentence. In the same way, O oh monks. These beings are few. Ye panya, panyavanto. This means possessed of wisdom. Here the word panya, you know, means wisdom. The same as Sanskrit prajna. And then this ending vant has the meaning possessed of or endowed with. And then when they get combined, this is a kind of suffix which joins to many, many uh, other nouns to form nouns that mean one who possesses. Like the word that's translated into Chinese as world honored one. In Pali, it would be Bhagavan. Bhaga means something like good fortune. And so one who possesses good fortune is the Buddha, the possessed, the, sometimes the blessed one or the fortunate one. And so Panya plus Vant becomes Panya Vant. Just the feminine long ending of Panya is lost when the two get joined. So one who possesses wisdom, or in other words, one who is wise. Then the next word, Ajala, means, Jala means something like stupid. So Ajala means who are intelligent, we could use a positive form instead of saying not stupid, who are intelligent, an elamuga, elamuga we could say really means the same thing as stupid, we could think of another word, dull-witted, obtuse, so we can render this maybe acute-minded or sharp-witted. Then the next phrase we have to take together, patibala, Subhasita dubhasita subhasita dubhasitasa atam anyatum. Patibala here comes from pat from bala, which means strength or power. Plus the prefix pati gives the meaning competent, you say, or able one who is the power. Then subhasita means what is well spoken and dubhasita what is badly spoken. Good statement, in other words, subhasita is good good statement, dubhasita, bad statement. And here, atam anyatung atam means meaning and anyatung is what part of speech is this? Infinitive of the verb what is the original verb? Does anybody know? Anya is the root actually but putting it in the the standard verb form present indicative it's ajanati yeah, the root is nya, which means to know. And from this we get 
Jnanasi. If you remember some week, I think about two weeks ago, I explained that in Sanskrit, this root would be Jnya, and that Jnya carries over into the indicative. So in Pali, one doesn't see it because it's coming from Nya to Janasi. Then when you put the prefix A, it just gives a slightly different shade of meaning. You could say to understand, to comprehend. And then the the infinitive of this, again the root reappears. It becomes A plus the infinitive, nyatum. Nyatum is the infinitive from nya. But when you have a meeting with nya, again there's some change. It's like a chemical change takes place. And the long a becomes a short a. And the n gets doubled. So it becomes anyatum. Again, don't be discouraged. These things get familiar once you become familiar with... <laughs> Okay, so we take this whole phrase together. Patibala means competent to understand the meaning of what is well spoken and badly spoken. Then the next phrase, Atako Eteva Sata Bahutara. But rather, these beings are more numerous who are dupanya. Here I should explain also in this expression subasita and dubasita. We have two common prefixes. Su and dur. Su as a prefix means something is good, like subasita. Basita means speech. Subasita is good speech, what is well spoken. Dur when you pre- becomes a prefix, the R gets assimilated. It ch- turns into the consonant to which it's joined. And it gives the meaning of what is bad. For example, another example, sukata means what is well done. In other words, a good deed. And dukkata means what is badly done, a bad deed. And so now in the word dupanya, It means those who have, we say, bad wisdom, but wisdom itself is never bad. So it's, in other words, those without wisdom, who are, you could say, poorly endowed with wisdom, and who are stupid, jala, obtuse, elamuga, not able to understand the meaning of what is well spoken, and badly spoken. Okay, so to put all of this together, in the same way, O monks, few are those beings who are wise, intelligent, sharp-minded, able to understand the meaning of what is well-spoken and badly spoken. But rather, these beings are more numerous who are unwise, who are lacking in wisdom, unintelligent, obtuse, not able to understand the meaning of what is well spoken and badly spoken. Everybody understand? Any questions? (laughs) Okay, the next Eva meva ko bikave, apakate sata. In the same way, O monks, few are those beings than the connecting phrase, the relative phrase, ye ariyena panya chakuna samanagata, who are possessed of, or you say, let's use, endowed with the arya, that's the noble, panya chaku. Eye of wisdom. Here, this is a compound, panya chaku. Panya means wisdom, chaku means eye. So few of the beings who are endowed with the noble eye of wisdom, attako eteva sata bahutara, 
ye avijagata samulha. But rather, these beings are more numerous who, here this compound avijagata, avija means ignorance, gata means gone. So it's literally gone to ignorance. Or you could say, in a better sounding phrase, who are immersed in ignorance. (laughs) And samulha means confused or deluded. Samulha comes from, you know the three roots of evil, greed, aversion, delusion. Do you know the Pali? Loba, dosa, moha. Okay, moha is from the root mu. Not the Zen koan. Does the dog have a Buddha nature? Mu. (laughs) But a root mu. It gives the noun moha, but it also gives a past participle form, mulha, which means deluded. And then this, this is a prefix which is added to it, which gives it somehow some, the prefix some, strengthens that meaning. So we can say samul, some, you could even have the noun samoha. Maybe is confusion. And samulha is confused. It's a past participle used as an adjective. Okay, then the next comes. Oh, yeah, yeah, I should have asked the question. Yeah. 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 M U H. Okay, shall we go on to the next one? Okay. Okay. In the same way, O monks, those beings are few. Okay, here we have the phrase, Ye Labanti Tathagatang Dasanaya. Okay, Dasanaya is what case? Dative. So we would render this literally foreseeing. You know the word Tathagata means thus come one. It's a designation for the Buddha. Okay. And Labanti is means to get, to gain. So here the Pali idiom would read who get few are those beings who get foreseeing the Tathagata. In English, if we take that very literally, it doesn't make sense, but we have to put it into idiomatic English as who get to see the Tathagata. It, 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 in some, pla- some places it has that meaning, but here it just means to see. Let me see. Oh, no, it gives all three meanings. Or sight, seeing, insight. Some places, dasana means like seeing the truth, having insight into the truth. But here it's just seeing. And so you just have to get familiar with this idiom. In English we say we get to see where we get the opportunity to see. In Pali, one would say, one gets foreseeing. I don't know if, I don't think the grammar gave an explanation of that idiom, but you just have to get familiar with it. Similarly, in the next sentence, okay, but okay, but those beings are more numerous who do not get to see the Tathagata. In other words, say in India, or even in the world at the time of the Buddha, very, very few people would have had the opportunity to see the, the, the Buddha compared to the millions, I don't know how many people were living in the world at that time, <laughs> several million people living outside who never got to see the Tathagata. Any questions about the sentence? I have a question about when you use yeah. yeah. No, I think it's very flexible. Unless... It's clear that the text is making a distinction between those who are over there and these who are here. Yeah, here either one will do. Yeah, yeah. Okay, then the next one that's constructed on the same pattern. Eva Meva Kobikave. In the same way, O monks, few are those beings who get, 
Here we have Tathagata Paveditam Dhamma Vinayam. Okay, the expression Tathagata Paveditam, this is a compound which is used as an adjective. It means, Paveditam means something like proclaimed or expounded. Again, it comes from a root vid, which means to know. <laughs> and then, when you have vid turns to vade, it takes on the causative form, made known. So, we don't have to know all of this, but pavedita is what is made known. In other words, what is expounded or proclaimed by here, tathagata pavedita, what is proclaimed by the tathagata. And dhamma vinaya, Dhamma means the doctrine, the teaching. Vinaya, the discipline or the training. And Savanaya is what case is it? It's dative again. And the meaning of this is what? For hearing. hearing. So few of those beings who get, literally in the Pali idiom, who get, get for hearing the doctrine and discipline expounded by the Tathagata. But putting it into normal English, we would say what? Who get to hear the Dhamma, the doctrine and discipline expounded by the Tathagata? But rather, these beings are more numerous who do not get to hear the doctrine and discipline expounded by the Tathagata. Any questions about this? Okay, now we can go to (laughs) the further exercises. And don't be afraid if we'll go in order, (laughs) but don't be afraid to make mistakes. The way you learn is by making mistakes and then correcting them. So, we come to page 26. And number one on the list is Piku Jahan. Jahan Shi. Let's see how far we. So, he means money. These three. Yeah. Bikare or Biku. Yeah. Nidanani. Yeah. Nidanani. 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 It's t- Nidanani. Causes. Yeah. Kamanan. Actions. Samudayaya. Yeah. So these three obikus are the, I put down as, are the origins of the causes of action. I would say rather the causes. Nidanani is causes. And then Samudayaya for the origination of actions. Yeah, yeah. So these are the way I usually translate this kind of construction. There are these three causes. There are, O monks, these three causes for the origination of actions. Or for the rising of actions. The rising of actions. As you wish, it doesn't matter. Okay. Go on. Uh, Katamani Kini. Is yeah. Maybe should I give you the microphone? Can every, everybody hear? Maybe some in the back. Just say it louder. Katamani Kini. Is a, what are these three? Yeah. Uh, Lobo Nidanan. 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 Yeah. Kamanan Samudayaya. Yeah. So, a uh, greed. Greed, uh, greed is the cause. A cause. A, is a cause yeah. for the origination of action. Right. And then doso, which is ang- ang- anger. Yeah, anger or anger, hate. I think a hatred, aversion. Hatred aversion, is yeah. a cause for the origination of action. Yeah. Delusion is the cause. A cause. Is a cause. Because there are three, yeah. yeah. Is a cause. For the origination of action. Right. I continue. Let's give somebody else a chance. Sharon. <laughs> okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. Yeah. Don't worry. 
Maybe we should use this. Yeah. The amplifier. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry about this because I don't exercise too much, so this time just three minutes, okay? Okay. And uh, next time I will do well. Okay. Diam, Ikve, Lohapatam, Tamam, Lohajam. Loba, it's Loba. Loba, yeah. okay. Loba Jam. Yeah. Okay, now, okay. I just read it because I really don't know this exercise. Oh, so, you mean you can't explain the English? No. Oh, okay, then we just pass to the next person. Don't feel uncomfortable or embarrassed. Yeah, no. No, we go to number three, that's Francis. Francis. Then we come to Po Wei. Yeah, I think she can do it. Yeah. Yeah. I think you can explain it. You don't have to read the Pali, but explain the words. Yeah. Yeah. Pakatan. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The next one is Kamang. Uh, Kamang. Ka- Kam. Yeah, Kamang. Yeah. yeah, it's not dative though. It's well, what case is it? No. <laughs> well, let us consider the sentence. Take the sentence as a whole, or the phrase as a whole. Yank bikave. Loba pakatang kamang, loba jang, loba nidanang, loba samudayang. And it's nominative? It's nominative, yeah. And you see, all of these other words are ending in the same way. Yang, pakatang, jang, nidanang, samudayang. So they all become, yeah, this needs some explanation. They are all nominative and they are all functioning as adjectives qualifying the word kama. Okay, so what is the su- the subject here is the word kama. Yeah, which means action or deed. So that deed which is loba pakatang, which means what? Yeah, which is Done through greed. Loba jung is. Nobody, uh, born, born of greed. Loba nidanang is. Right. And loba samudayang. Exactly. Okay, so all of these form the relative phrase so far, up to the point we've reached. There's one subject there, which is kama. And all the other words now are adjectives describing this comma. So the comma, which is done out of greed, born of greed, caused by greed, originating, originated by greed. Okay, continue. Right. Okay, translate that. Uh, it is a bad action. That action is unwholesome, we would say. Okay. The next, Savajjang. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that deed results in suffering, or it has suffering as its result. Okay, the next. Yeah. 
Ja. Yeah. It's not that it leads to the deed that is the original or, origin of action, but rather that, you see, the subject here is still tongue kamang, still that action. So that action leads to the origination of action. In other words, the sense is that that action, born of greed, brings about the arising of more actions that keep one bound even longer within samsara, the cycle of rebirth. Yeah, yeah. Here it's Kama Nirodaya. To the what? To the cessation of Kama. Right, right. So this action that is born of greed, produced by greed, does not lead to the cessation of Kama. Yeah, we pass on to the next. But <laughs> in a sense you've done the, laid, done the groundwork for the next sentence. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. Georgette, Georgette. Are you more interested in your origin? So yeah. What action is it that's uh, done out of uh, ill will yeah. or anger? Yeah. Born of ill will, caused by ill will, um, arising from ill will. Yeah. And um, then it's the receipt of yeah. it yeah. is an unwholesome action. Yeah. Um, it is a blameworthy or blamable, yeah. faulty action. It yeah. is a deed resulting in suffering. Yeah. Right. Okay, and then the next one just repeats the same thing in relation to moha delusion. Okay, so we don't have to go through the next one. But then the conclusion comes, imani ko bhikave. You can do the conclusion, Georgette. Imani ko bhikave. No, it should be quite obvious. Yeah. Yeah. Um, action arises or karma arises. Which three or what three? Wait, 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 wait. Imani ko bhikave tini nidani. Kamam samudayaya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With these three as. These, what I was thinking of, imani ko bhikave tini nidanani kamanang samudayaya. The imani ko is these. Yeah. Yeah. Three. Yeah. And then this construction, the da nani, is yeah. having X as a source. Um, come on, is action or yeah. deed. Yeah. Samudayaya, arising yeah. from. For the arising. For yeah. the arising. Yeah. yeah. So put it all together. So these three. Or I would well, say. Yeah, I would say that, you see, because Imani is separated from the Tini, mm-hmm. so these, O oh monks, are the three causes for the origination of actions. Yes. Yeah. Well, these are three causes for the origination of actions. Okay, now we come to the other side, the positive side of the teaching. Now we take Hui Chong. Yeah. Three. Yeah. Three. A lobo here now. A lobo is what? Yeah. Okay. A lobo means what? <laughs> okay. Not none of greed, just non greed, the absence of greed. The absence of greed. Yeah. Nidanang Kamanang Samudhyaya is a cause. Yeah. From the origin for what is the for the origination of action. Right. Of those stories. Non anger. 
Yeah, or non-hatred is better, I think. Huh? Non-hatred. Non-hatred. Yeah. Is the uh, is for the origination. No. Yeah? Here you have to read. You see that there's an implied word is. There's no word in the sentence that corresponds to is, but the word hoti, meaning is, is implied. We say the... Yeah. Is a cause. Is a cause yeah. for the origination of action. Right. Mm. And next, a moho. A non-delusion. Non- yeah, non-delusion. Non-delusion is the cause. A cause. A cause. Yeah. For the origination of the action. Of action. Of action. Yeah. <laughs> you like to try the next sentence? Okay, Vern Jane Yue, Yu. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Aloba Yeah. Tamang Aloba 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 Yeah. Aloba yeah. Okay, translate that much. Preach, uh, oh, uh, speak Hakan. Yeah. Oh, monks, yeah. Oh, monks. Yeah. Done out of a uh, non great action. Yeah. Uh, born of a uh, non great. Yeah. Uh, caused by non great. Yeah. Uh, originated by non great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that action is wholesome. That action is wholesome. Yeah. Uh, that action uh, is not faulty. Yeah, a blame, yeah, blameless, we could say. Blameless. Blameless, or faultless, faultless. Yeah. Okay. That action is happiness. Uh, that action uh, is uh, the cessation of action. Okay, very, very good, except Tankamang Sukha Vipakang, that action results in happiness. You see, Vipaka means result. And so Sukha Vipaka means that it results in happiness or it has pleasant results. Okay. okay. Then continue the last part. Natankamang. The last phrase. Okay. Um, Look at the whole phrase. Natang kamang kama samudayaya sangvatati. Na. Do you know what na is? Na. Right. So now start again. The action does not lead um, the origin of action. Yeah, that action does not lead to the origination of action. In other words, the action which originates from non-greed, from absence of greed, doesn't lead to a chain of actions keeping one in bondage. Okay, and let's, for the next two, we will pass to Kenneth Chun. No, we still have, just to quickly, the last, the other two, which are just the continuation of that. You didn't do the rest? Okay, try number two then. Of course, the other two were just really they're modeled on the same on the sentence that she just translated, except it's non-hatred, non-delusion. Yeah. Yeah. Chavati. Right. Okay, translate. Uh, five. There are five. Uh, old monks. Um, Samahi is the um, a doctrine or a quality. Which one? Uh, Sunday, did you say which one? Yeah, you said Dhamma. Dhammahi uh, is uh, doctrines or. Um, qualities. Right, qualities. And what case is Panchahi? 
instrumental. instrumental. And Panchahi goes along with uh, what? Correct. With what? No, I'm saying it. Panchahi means five, right? Yes. And it qualifies what other word? Yeah. yeah. What is it? Modifying. What is it modifying? Yeah. Damehi. And the word samanakato means, means uh, possessing, possessed of. Okay. So, again, now translate. Um, there are five. No, you, we don't have there. There are here. First, find the subject. What is the subject? Samehi. No. It has to be a word in the nominative. What is the subject? Bikul. Right. And samanagato means what? Oh, we have we we okay means possessed of. Okay, and but samanagato goes with instrumental. So we, let's say endowed with the word endowed takes instrumental. So a bhikkhu endowed with five qualities, chavati. Right, like falls away. Right, and what does that mean? Not, uh, yeah, and no, no, no. Sad is true. No, no. I think you're getting this confused with the word sadda, and I don't like their renderings. <laughs> Saddame, we've had several times already. Anybody can go off to the meaning? The true Dhamma, the true doctrine, you could say. Okay, so a monk who is endowed with five qualities falls away. He is not established. He does not become firm in the true Dhamma. With what... Okay, continue. Chavati. Chavati. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, no, it doesn't have anything to do with. There's no word dhamma here. Yeah, I ha- I hear people saying not not determined. Yeah, but I have to say I disagree with the use. The authors make use of the word sad. Uh, they render sadda as determined, but I don't know how they get that meaning. It means having faith. Having faith. Yeah, the important word, the noun sadda is faith. Sada is like the first of the five faculties, first of the five powers, always very often emphasized by the Buddha. And so, <coughs> Sada, the abstract noun, is a feminine with the A, ah, the long A ending. But a man who has faith would be Sada with the short A. A woman who has faith would be Sada <laughs> in with the long A. And one lacking faith, it's a plus sadda, the negative a. So one, you could say, devoid of faith, a bhikkhu devoid of faith, is a sadda. So a monk devoid of faith falls away and is not established in the true Dhamma. Next sentence. Okay. Okay. Can you just give us the meaning in brief? Yeah. Yeah. One without a sense of shame. Yeah. 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 Kusito is what? 
indolent or lazy. Ignorant, yeah, the one devoid of wisdom. Yeah. Okay, then the last sentence of that. Imehiko bhikkave. Translate that. Imehiko bhikkave panchahi. So this, this part, uh, old monks. Let us take the subject first. Okay. The way I would render it. A monk endowed with these five qualities falls away and does not stand firmly in the true Dhamma. Okay, let us just try to finish this up. Now we come to Elena. Excuse me? Okay, okay. Then after Elena we come to Sister Brandy. (laughs) No. (laughs) Guo Jing. <laughs> Starting with Panchahi Bhikkave Dhammehi Samanagato. Panchahi. <laughs> okay, Reverend Anthony, you like to? Uh, Jahan, Jahan, Shu. Um, these five qual. A bhikkhu endowed with these five qualities yeah. um, does not fall away and uh, is established in the true Dhamma. Right. Then continue. And what are... With... Which five? Yeah. And then um, a monk, um, all monks, a, a bhikkhu without... Uh, with faith. Yeah. With faith does not fall away and is established in the true Dhamma. Yeah. And um, a bhikkhu, uh, all monks, because I don't want to get rid of the monks. Yeah. Uh, all monks, <laughs> that was a joke. Uh, all monks, a bhikkhu, um, uh, who is, um, was it modest? Yeah, or who has a sense of shame. <laughs> yeah, with a sense of shame, does not fall away, uh, does not fall away and is established is established in the true Dhamma. Yeah. Uh, Otapa. Otapi, yeah. Otapi. Uh, a bhikkhu, O monks, uh, with with moral dread. Yeah, that's yeah. With moral dread, does not fall away, and is is established in the true Dhamma. Yeah. Uh, o monks, a bhikkhu, with diligence. Yeah. Does not fall away. Is established in the true Dhamma. Yeah. Um, Panya ba. Yeah. Okay. A bhikkhu uh, who is wise. Right. Uh, does not fall away and is established in the true Dhamma. Right. Uh, by these, all monks. Um, no, take the subject first. Make it cold. No, take the subject first. The subject. Yeah. Okay. A bhikkhu. Yeah. Um. Endowed with these five qualities, does not fall away, and is established in the true Dhamma. Okay, excellent. Now I want all of you to be able, next time, to be able to translate just like Jahan Shu translated, just right off, quickly, accurately. Any questions? Yeah. They are here adjectives. But they're based on nouns. Like, okay, the word asado is based on the noun sada. Let's uh, let's take the positive forms. Okay, sado is based on the noun sada. Sada means faith. So a person with faith, a man with faith is sado. A woman with faith would be sada. Okay, hirima is based on the noun hiri. Hiri means a sense of shame. And so one who has a sense of shame 
is Kiri Ma. This ending Ma also has a sense of possessing. Before there are these two types of terminations. Before I showed you Bant, what was the word that we had? Bhagava. Panyava, Panyava. Panyavan means one possessing wisdom. And the normal nominative for this, Panyava. Now I don't want to explain. Later we come to the declension of this type of noun. And then you'll see how you get the, the nominative va. But the ending bant is used with nouns that end in a to get forms of possessing this, possessing that. The month is used it attaches on to other nouns that end in different vowels, I or you, to give ma form, hiri ma, one who possesses a sense of shame. So tapa means fear of wrongdoing or moral dread. And by changing the A to I, it becomes an adjective meaning one or qualifying a person who has fear of wrongdoing, a person with a sense of moral dread. Then panya is a noun, and when it gets followed by this ending van, we get panya va, panya van, panya va, singular, a person with wisdom, a wise person. Kusita is just an adjective. Kusita. Yeah. I have serious doubt about the meaning that this book renders for many words. I have to say... Uh, it's uh, kind of confusing yeah. to me because yeah. as you are translating, yeah. Yeah. It, it actually flows. Yeah. And then as I am putting the meaning according to the book, it doesn't make sense yeah. to me. So I don't know if uh, perhaps yeah, I've actually I need to revise... The yeah, book. actually I did that. I should have read those stuff. So. But just for a few words, um, in the glossary, uh, okay, on page 16, for the word Ela Muga, not receptive to that doctrine, it seems too specific a meaning. The general sense is just stupid or obtuse. Then for Kusala, I would take off merit, which is better as the meaning of the word punya. And I would put wholesome. I usually translate as wholesome. Then let's see. On the next page for papa, I would cut off sin. It has such the word sin has such Christian connotations. It doesn't seem so applicable to Buddhism. Then in the vocabulary on page 20, or the glossary on page 28, for anavajja, blameless seems to be simple, a simple form. Blameless or faultless. Then for alobo, I see, they have for lobo avarice. Or they have for lobo avarice, but usually greed is simple, simplest, and best. So alobo becomes non-greed. For a moho, just above it, non-delusion, though non-confusion also is all right. Then for they have for a sadda, non-determined, but a sadda means one lacking faith, a person without faith. Unfortunately, the word faithless takes on a different meaning in English. From it doesn't mean one lacking faith. Then the word chavati can mean both falls away but it also has another meaning of to die. So that's not relevant to the passage here. And then for sadda, as we go down sadda, I would take off determined, cut off determined. And then for samudayo, rise, origin, origination. And for hirima, the last I would put having a sense of shame. And for next week, so that you go into next week's glossary, next week's 
lesson, I made some modifications to the glossary. On page 30, go down to Kochi Deva. I think I would prefer anyone at all. It's better than someone or other. Anyone at all. Then for Dutto, rather than he who is wicked, but I think the usual sense is one who has hatred. And for doso, just below it, better than anger or ill will, I use, use hatred. Then for pati sandahati, pati sandahati, the best of these meanings is is reborn. Then let's see. For pano, here the relevant meaning is living being. Then bhavita, I think the best of the meanings given is developed and bhaveti develops. Then towards the end, on the next page, 32, vinyu garahita, despised by the wise ones. Maybe that's too strong. I would say criticized by the wise or condemned by the wise. And then for sankamati, transmigrates is better. And sankamanto, just below it, one who transmigrates. Okay, any further questions? Okay, then we will stop for now and come back next week. Next week I will explain the grammar to lesson three, and then we go through the opening readings of number three. But please do the, even try to work on those readings yourself. Don't just think, okay, Bhante is going to explain them. I don't have to look at them.